Hi everyone, Nolan here, and what I'd like to do with you in this video is show you how to deal with scatter plots. I have four major goals for you in this video. Uh, the first is to evaluate if a scatter plot graph is appropriate for a given data set. The second is to create and format a scatter plot in Excel. This is the desktop version of Excel. I'm not talking about Excel 365 online. Those two work a little bit differently. The third is to display the line of best fit its equation and the R squared value for a data set in Excel. And the fourth is to paste a scatter plot from Excel into a PowerPoint or Word document. So when do we use a scatter plot? We use a scatter plot graph when we have a data set that includes two different quantities that are arranged in columns. We also want to be able to determine if these two quantities are correlated, if they share some kind of relationship. So I'll show you what it looks like when you have a data set that you can put into a scatter plot. Um, and so that way you can kind of tell right away, is a scatter plot appropriate for this data set? So for this first example, uh, I have some data, which I have uh, plugged in here. If you don't know how to type data into Excel, how to do basic data entry, then this video is not for you. You're gonna have to kind of uh, backtrack and figure out how to do that. But here I've already plugged in some, some numbers. I have two columns. Here's one column with a set of quantities, and here's another column with another set of quantities. And we want to see, well, is, is the current related to the luminous intensity? Is there a correlation between these two things? So to find this out, we can create a scatter plot. That's what a scatter plot is for, is to show us correlations between an X value and a Y value. Um, first of all, notice how these are in two columns. I have one column and I have another column. If these are arranged sideways in a row, this will not work in Excel. You have to get this arranged so that they're in columns. There's ways that you can do that, but we're just going to assume, okay, we've punched in our numbers. They're in two different columns. Here's one value, here's another. Notice also I did not include the units inside the data cells. The units have to be at the header of the column. If you start putting letters and numbers into a cell, Excel cannot deal with that. So I want to create a scatter plot here. So to do that, I'm going to highlight all my data, including the headers. So that's uh, those the tops of those two columns, as well as all the numbers that just click and drag, and I'll highlight all of that. And there's a really easy function, a really easy way to create a scatter plot. It's up here in the Insert tab of Excel. We're just going to click that. And we're going to move over here, and you're going to find a whole big area with charts. There's one chart we want. It's a scatter plot chart. So you're going to click on this little illustration that has a Y and an X axis and some dots on it. Just click it, and it will give you a drop-down menu. We'll click this very first option um, that says scatter, and there's our graph. Now this graph really isn't formatted very well. I'll show you how to fix the formatting on that. So one of the problems with this graph is that there are no axis uh, titles. I don't know what these axes are because they're not included. Also, I don't like the title of the graph. Um, and so we're going to fix both of those things. So I'm going to find this little plus sign up here. This allows me to add different parts to my graph. Uh, the only thing here that I need to add is access titles. You can experiment with these other things, but that's what I'm going to do, add access titles. And it automatically fits the graph so that you have space for these titles. So that's wonderful. I'm just going to go ahead and type those in manually how I want them. Okay, so I fixed those access titles. Um, and to do that, all you do is you just click on the box, um, and now you have access to it, this text box. So I'm also going to change the title. Uh, I don't like how it's just titled Luminous Intensity, so I'm going to change that to something else. Okay, so I've fixed my title, so it's a little bit more informative, current versus luminous intensity in an LED. And uh, so when we look at our graph as it has automatically been formatted, it's pretty easy to see that there actually should be a correlation. It looks like as I increase my current, the luminous intensity increases. We see this sort of tilted line going up. Um, but we can actually really dive in here and we can interpret this relationship mathematically. Excel lets us do that. There's a whole suite of tools that Excel lets us use uh, very, very easily. In, in order to start dealing with this data set, I'm just going to right click on one of the points. It doesn't matter which it is. And let's add a trend line. And what Excel does right away is it sticks a linear trend line onto our data. Um, and again, it looks like it fits pretty well, but I'm going to show you some tools that we can use to interpret this. Um, one thing that I want us to be able to do is to display the equation on the chart. This line actually has a slope intercept formula that, that Excel can calculate for you. This is rise over run um, that you might remember learning from uh, high school or, or middle school. 
So I'm going to go over here to the format trend line window that has just opened up, uh, and I'm going to click display equation on chart. And what this does is it actually shows me an algebraic equation that describes the slope of that line. And I'm also going to click display R squared value on chart. And when I click that, it gives me this R squared value. In this case, it's, it's 0.999. And what an R squared value is, it really tells us how closely do the points align with our trend line. If your R squared value is close to zero, that means that you don't have a very good relationship between your trend line and your points. If your R squared value is close to one, as it is in this example, it means we have a very, very close relationship between our trend line and our points. In this case, we have a high R squared value. This equation is a very faithful uh, predictor, a very faithful representation of what the, act, the data actually show us. There are some additional little ways that you can kind of clean up the formatting of this graph. Um, and so one way that you can do that, if you just click on the white space of the graph, you can go over here to home. We're still in Excel. We're going to go up to home. Let's say I want to change the font. I don't like Calibri body. So um, let's, uh, let's change this to Cambria. There we go. That looks better. And I also don't like how it's this dark gray color. Maybe I want the uh, the color of the text to actually be black. It, that will actually print better. Um, and so I can actually go up here and change it to black. You can see that the text is now quite a bit more bold. Um, maybe I also want to make the text a little larger. Uh, I can, uh, again, click the whole graph and I can click this up arrow on the font up here and I can make all those letters bigger uh, and numbers. Um, or maybe I just want to make the title bigger. You can actually click on the title box and you can make that title a bit larger. Maybe you can make it bold. You know, there, there's all kinds of ways that you can play around with the formatting of this graph. But let's say this is how I want it. Um, I can now very easily copy and paste this graph into another document. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the white space. I'm going to right click and then we'll see copy. So we're just going to copy this and I'm going to open up, let's say I'm creating a presentation and I want to put this into a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I'm going to open up a blank slide, just right click. I have a few options in terms of how I can paste this. The easiest one is to select this one at the very right that says picture. What has happened is I have uh, pasted my graph just as an image file. I can't edit it. I can't do any, make any changes to it. It's just pretty much the way that it is. Or I can actually paste it as a uh, modifiable uh, a little piece of my uh, file. So I can paste in there. Um, and that what this enables me to do um, is actually continue working on the formatting so let's say I wanted to, you know, change the font again. I can make, you know, the text size larger. I could change, you know, the color. I can change the shape and size of the graph. So there's things that I can do in here. Um, I can do the same thing in Word. So let's say that I, I like my graph. I'm going to copy my graph and I'm going to go into Word. Let's say you're typing an essay of some kind. Um, all you have to do is jump in here. Same thing. You can paste it as a, a picture. Uh, and so this, this little file is not editable or I can paste it. Um, so that I can actually adjust things. Maybe at the last second, I decide I want to change the title or something. Um, that can actually be a benefit because then you can do little tweaks in your graph while it's in your document. You don't have to go back and change it and then copy and paste again. So we really should have met uh, our goals at this point. We should be able to evaluate if a scatter plot is appropriate for a data set. We should be able to create and format a scatter plot in Excel. And we should also be able to display the line of best fit the equation and our squared value for a data set in Excel. And I just showed you how to paste a scatter plot from Excel into a PowerPoint or Word document. So I hope that this quick little primer was useful. Um, and uh, the next portion of this video will be me showing you how to do uh, some kind of more fine tuning in terms of how you're looking at your data, adjusting axes, um, tr trying to decide, can I modify this, this uh, a scatter plot to give me better data. So this is Nolan signing off. Until next time, remember, you can learn anything.